So it's day three here in Joshua Tree National Park. Uh, it's for a sunrise. I'm near Skull Rock. Uh, challenge I have right now, it's raining over past a little. There could be some breaks in the skies. It's light out, but there is no light out. So hoping something breaks uh, here so that I'll try to capture an image. So I'm just gonna scout around try to find a composition while I wait to see where the sun decides, if it decides to reveal itself uh, this morning. So I have three general compositions uh, picked out. This uh, big rock formation to the right is a spot where the sun could hit if it decides to pop it this morning. So that's one option. And as I pan right, off in the distance, uh, there's that rock formation over there as well, um, which can, um, would also likely get some light and it pops out if it pops out. And then I can just go up over the rock in front of me and there's a, a rock I passed on the way into this uh, particular area. So right now it's just a bit of a waiting game. It is hard to tell but there looks to be some breaks in the sky although it's still raining a little. So we're gonna wait and probably get the gear out. Um, As I was driving into uh, Joshua Tree National Park this morning, I wasn't sure exactly what I would find because you know, I, I didn't tape it on the way in, but it was socked in with fog. Um, as I went through the, the front gate, I could barely see the outline of the, of the structure, the uh, park office there. I could just see uh, the two little floodlights uh, illuminating it a bit and as i was driving up the first part of the main drive it was nothing but fog i had still decided to come up obviously because i'm here i thought well let's let's see what there is and we'll wait to see what uh you know sunrise may burn that off so uh obviously it has at least in this area of the park um so i'm kind of waiting it's still uh spitting a little I can see some breaks in the cloud, but the uh, issue is the sun is to rise over there, and that's still where there's a good chunk of uh, clouds are. So right now it's very diffused light. Um, I'm not finding anything that's currently speaking to me. But we're gonna wait, we're gonna see if uh, anything um, uh, uh, transpires or uh, the light comes. So we're just gonna wait a little. So the sun was, well, has risen 10 minutes ago. Um, Unfortunately, this time yesterday, the sky was lighting up, but with it being so overcast, cloudy here, uh, the rain, it's, it's, it's drizzling. As I said, the sun is to rise in that direction. Uh, it has not really popped through because that's where the bulk of the cloud cover is. Today is the, the weather just and the light really isn't cooperating. Um, so I'm here, I'm going to wait to see what the, the weather does. Um, I did take a shot um, of these mountains and rocks over here. Uh, interesting shot, once again, unfortunately I wish there was some more light, at least somehow the, the sky catching or some light hitting, um, hitting the rocks as the, as the sun rise, but uh, that has not happened. I don't think it will, but we'll wait and see. So it's starting to rain a little harder right now. Um, so I'll explain what I'm doing. Hopefully this turns out. 
So what I've decided to do is a vertical pano of this range back here. Started over here and I'm working my way left. I am bracketing this uh, just to get the full dynamic range and hopefully pull something out of the sky. I'm not too hopeful for this shot, but I'm here. I thought I'd try it. I don't do too many vertical panels. Uh, we'll see how things uh, turn out. I am uh, in my car, obviously. Uh, I was doing a pano. So now, unfortunately, my uh, filters were starting to fog up because I put something on top of it to kind of shield it. Um, uh, at least I think that was probably what was causing the fog. So near the end, the image wasn't exactly uh, coming out as to what I wanted. Uh, I was going to redo the pano, and I still might. Um, I'm just waiting for the, the rain to die down a little bit more. But also to give a chance for my um, uh, filters to uh, defog. Uh, as you might have noticed, I had this on top of it, uh, just a cloth uh, on top of my camera. It wasn't what was covering uh, the, the filter holders. Uh, but I bought that just to help further protect the camera. Um, like I say, I, I don't normally shoot in the, in the rain. Uh, but I, for this type of trip, I... Um, Pretty much forced to because i'm here i want to shoot now the one piece of kit i've heard other landscape photographers talk about this is a an umbrella uh that would have been i think extremely helpful because i could have just open it up uh, and i do have a little pocket mini one that i could have put in my luggage uh without a problem so something to note for the future to have with me anyways i'm gonna wait here a little while i'm hoping it's rain to die down and i'm waiting for my filters to kind of defog and get a get a chance and, and i'll probably go back out and do a little more shooting this morning I did get out and leave my car. Uh, now I did not do really any vlogging afterwards, but that's because I decided to really look around and focus on the intimate landscape. So up until this point, uh, I was trying to find the vistas and, and really try to get a sense of the grandness of Joshua Tree National Park. Now, as you can see here, uh, this is a photo of a chola cactus. Uh, it was not far from where I uh, was photographing before. What I really like about this image is the isolation. So this is actually a top-down view of a chola cactus plant. And this is actually outside of my comfort zone. So the, this photo and the ones that follow really are not something that I've normally photographed, but I'm glad I kind of stretched uh, myself. Now that was somewhat out of necessity, just given the fact that the uh, light really wasn't there. Now at this point, the rain had basically subsided and the drizzle had subsided, but the light still was not there, uh, although we were well past sunrise at this point. Now, this photo here is once again, of a, as you can see, another Chola cactus plant. Uh, these are obviously all around Joshua Tree National Park. Uh, what I really liked about this image here is the plant behind it and the color uh, and everything that kind of brought together from this chaos of all this different plant material into this beautiful image. Now the Chola cactus plant is the uh, main subject of this photo, but the, the entire plant life around it, I think really makes this image pop, which is funny, it's quite a contrast to the other image, which the previous image was very minimalist, uh, pretty much blackness around the Chola cactus plant. There is some detail of the plant material underneath. But this uh, photo here, it is definitely much more colorful and bringing some order to the chaos. One thing that Joshua Tree National Park is known for is its rock formations. Uh, some of them have uh, their own names, uh, such as Skull Rock, uh, Penguin Rock, and among others. Now, this one I came across here. Uh, and I could actually see it from a distance. I was hoping the light would really hit on it. And I was able to make something of this particular photograph. And to me, it looks like an alien from Prometheus, Pr Prometheus uh, from the Aliens movies. Now, a friend of mine, on uh, when I posted this, uh, said it 
looked like that of an elephant. Uh, so I can definitely see where they were coming from there. This is definitely something I very much enjoy about Joshua Tree, uh, are the boulders and just how Mother Nature has carved various formations. Uh, it reminds me of as a child, you would look up in the sky and see clouds and you would see various images. Uh, this is what I see here uh, amongst uh, these boulders. Now, I did come across, once again, Chola cactus plants are, are abundant. Uh, now, in this particular area of the park, they, they are scattered throughout. Now, what I liked about this particular photo is, you know, the, the, the rock underneath it with the backlight because uh, the sun was rising from behind. Uh, now, this is actually something about Chola cactus plants that make them great to photograph through pretty much any weather condition uh, including the uh, skies that I was getting this uh, the overcast skies that I was getting on this particular day what I'd be interested in knowing is is there a favorite uh, photograph out of the four that I shared uh, which one speaks to you most and as well for the Prometheus alien shot is that what you see do you see an elephant or do you see something else entirely? I'm quite interested in knowing. But that's uh, the end of my uh, trip here in Joshua Tree. It was, I will say it was too short. I very much am hoping to get back there at some point. And in fact, the next time I'm there, I'm planning on camping. Uh, not only will that allow me to be even closer to uh, the locations I'll be looking to photograph. Although 29 Palms where I was staying in a nice little Best Western Hotel was, was nice, not too far. I think though camping in Joshua Tree is an experience uh, that I'm very much looking forward to and I kind of regret not trying to take advantage of that. But at the particular time I was there there was the uh, partial U.S. government shutdown, so the national parks were shut down. Uh, in fact, up until a day or two before departing, I wasn't even sure Joshua Tree uh, was going to be open. So that's it. Uh, once I'd like to thank you for watching my video uh, and my adventure here in Joshua Tree National Park. After this, I head off towards uh, Death Valley where I had a great time there as well. So stay tuned for more content. Uh, please uh, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, 